Evening, Red Trevors. How you doing? 7.25 at night, West Coast time. It's the 19th of April, 2024. But who am I? I am but the weaver named John Weaver. Rosamund, California. Greets you, kind sir. At Nova Scotia, somewhere far beyond east. Well, I should feel a little bit good today, but after hearing about everything else happening in news these days, we got troublesome evictions happening out here in Southland. In one particular neighborhood, you had about 700 plus tenants living in one particular apartment complex that corporations are playing head, uh, head games with. <laughs> Trying to evict them. Claim they're going to remodivate, uh, remodel this place and then get higher priced tenants in the place. Call it a senior living. Tenants been living there for about 20 or 30 years making, making it their home. And now they got to sue. And they're trying to get the city on that one. There's also another place out in Torrance. Uh, a hotel converted into temporary living quarters. They've been having, hosting people there for several months. Some of them are actually handicapped, been there for a little bit longer than that. They've been through an, uh, an ordeal of recovery. And now they got to get kicked out? It seems that the values that we try to, you know, we try to promote, just doesn't work sometimes with some of these people. Greed and avarice is the only thing that they understand. More money for the corporate shareholders. How about this one? I'm sure you heard this one on the news already. Must have made you sick, you and your family, and the rest of your church community. <laughs> Reverend. You're a little younger than I am, but you probably read something about it in the history books, and if you haven't, I would ask a favor of you, Reverend. Vietnam War monk. Um, if you have to Google, Google new uh, NBC article that was dated back in 2012, 2013, because of this one monk who died back in the Vietnam War and the photographer who was getting that story, had passed away during that time. And I was doing a Google search on this one because a friend of mine on the East Coast, a little south of you, in uh, Connecticut, he was bringing up relevance and similarities of the New York burning versus the Vietnam burning. And I had a research on that one. I've got videos on my own channel diary of the griever named John Weaver that talks about this one Rev just look out for artists in recovery postings and I may have to send you a couple of clips on that one I think I'll do that because that one really got me disturbed on this one the media really hadn't been going into the guy's history to find out what was going on, and one of them was dealing with uh, elections, okay, fine. Some of the other conspiracies that said, said conspiracies, and that's about it, but they weren't specific on what they were looking for. What I'm looking for is there's a story in there somewhere. But one of the stories that they had talked about, I had experienced, actually gone through. Watching history, you go through it. You're a passive observer, or maybe an active observer which makes you an active participant instead of an observer, doesn't it? Which is weird enough anyway. I was talking to people concerning about what was the incident happening out in Florida that made them had that Supreme Court decision to, to install uh, George Walker Bush into the presidency of the United States instead of Albert Gore. And there were certain aspects of it that was just getting to me on that one. Artist in recovery. A guy's name is Daryl P. He's a, he's a recovering uh, drug addict. He's got 15 years clean and sober. 
It's roughly the same time as I have. Roughly the roughly the same age. So we both chewed the same uh, dirt, so to speak. So he would remember some of the stuff. But the stuff that happened back in 1963, we weren't even aware of. We didn't even read any history books about this one. But as I was going through college in my later adult life, yeah, I came across that one. And coming across it again, I keep looking at the guy who burned himself alive, uh, who's in critical condition, since CCU over at the uh, New York Hospital right now. He's under intense life support. Well, damn near died after a third degree. Making a, there are jokes about this one that one doesn't say, but there was motivations in this guy had, had made him bring tension to some of this stuff. Even it seemed like conspiracy. I just wanted to find out what exactly he was talking about. Maybe some of the stuff is conspiracy. Maybe it isn't. If it's about election fraud, okay, fine. If it's concerning about little green men, I don't know about that one, if that's a conspiracy or not. When he was talking about the election situation back in 2000, that got my attention right there. But if there was anything else regarding it that was motivating this guy. This is said before, it brought me back to the 1963 burning of this one monk. And if I'm not mistaken, the South Vietnamese government and the Buddhist monks out there, there was a situation happening between these guys that they really wanted to make a massive statement. And this was about the Vietnam War happening between the North and the South. The North wanted to make everything communist, and North, actually in the South, still wanted to make it democratic. But something about the South Vietnamese government made this particular monk and the other monks complicit into it. Having this guy turn into a... Uh, how would you call it? Would you call him a martyr for a cause? Being burned alive? And if the cause was just in his head... But to us, maybe the cause wasn't. But he was bringing the massive attention. That's for, Dan, that's for darn sure. Which put us into the firing uh, into the firing zone of the Vietnam War. That picture, within hours, and pictures like it, transmitted across everyone's uh, television screens and newspapers. And there was something not poetic powerful about the image. Not a guy getting burned to death. I guess there was a hell of a lot of pictures being sent by the press corps when they went over to Vietnam to see that stuff and sending it back. And these days, decades later, it's still powerful. But we just don't understand it, do we? Until we start seeing everything else happening. With every damn war that we capture that has effects of war. You know what the scary thing about the concept of war? We don't see innocence. MASH. Comedy series. There's something about war, war is war and hell is hell. And how come you don't see innocence and in hell? Okay, hang on. Okay, there's a clip that Hawkeye Pierce was talking to them about. This clip is the property of 20th Century Fox Television. So I'm getting a copyright uh, disclaimer on there about this one. But this was... This is important. I've got to listen to this one here. Let's see if I can get this backed up here. Because this is important. 
So that's the clip um, from Ash. Seeing how we treat people these days. You know, I hear these Christian, so-called Christians out there and the Christian nationalists out there who claim that they're fighting for Christ and therefore it's their intention to slaughter or to hurt or maim or kill or disembowel or something like that. These are mutants. We got to get rid of them. They're uh, they're obscenity to God. I could have been an obscenity to God. Should have been. I should have been dead. If you had caught my videos and probably forgotten about it, let me remind you a little bit. When I was born, I was born with multiple birth defects. I was born with crooked limbs, which I had to have artificial, bra I had to have braces to get my limbs straightened a bit. And I believe that was a nightmare. I don't barely remember that one. But what I do remember around the age of four is dealing with oxygen tents and then dealing with surgery and death and coming back to life three times and then dealing with the living hell after that. Open eye surgery. Still barely cured this scar right here. Still got a scar right here and on my thigh. They had to repair one mitral valve patch. The other one sewn up, and the other one leaking. I'm told past 25 and 30. I had to take it easy on myself. I still walk, I could still exercise a bit, but I still had to take it easy on myself. But I could have been dead. I should have been dead. God wanted me alive for one reason or another. I should have been dead a long time ago. That would have put a change of things in mind, David. They say that God's got plans on anything and everything. And sometimes free will has a tendency to screw things up or if nudged in the right way can be beneficial. I don't know if my nudging or me being nudged in this way is beneficial or not. But seeing everything else happening these days, I have to comment about it. I've got to talk about it. It's not the politics about this person or that person or how this is going and how that's going and I should feel this and I should be that. I should be patriotic. I should be a patriotic Christian. Christ was patriotic. He followed a flag. He followed the American flag. And then that kind of issue that we're running into these days? Christian nationalism. Or can I call it Sharia law? How else would you call it? It's one thing dealing with with what happened in Iran back in the late 70s. A democratic controlled country, uh, country turns into Islamic Jihad. Islamic fundamentalism. Basically Sharia law in action. You don't argue, because if you do, you die. So we got to deal with that these days in the Christian realm, doesn't it?
people have to be following one way or another or another person to their either salvation or eventual slide downhill. So I don't I don't understand. One thing I don't understand is the absolute focus that this had to happen with this one guy being burned to death alive. What was he trying to tell people? It's not that I'm trying to find out if it's all cockamamie or not, but what if there was a greater truth in there somewhere? At times, I listen. My brain is listening for things that I consciously didn't catch. Or just sticks in my craw that I gotta talk about it. What was a guy burning himself to death for? Usually, we burn flags for political protest. We have the First Amendment rights to do that. Other people hate it because they value our American flag as absolute and sacrosanct. For me, the meaning and meanings are deeper. But for freedom of speech, if we burn it in protest, then we burn it in protest. And people don't like it because that's un American. I hate to say it, but it is American. It is American because we had people fighting for our rights to protest, to demonstrate, to validate the First Amendment. To validate the Constitution. And if it means I got to be a disagreement with the other schmuck, this is part of the American way. Advanced American citizen, I, I don't know how many times I kept posting and or talking about it a great deal. The, the American president, it was a drama, it was a comedy drama, Michael Douglas, God, God, she's going to slap me upside the head. Uh, good Lord. Okay. Bear with me on this one. Bear with me on this one. Okay. It was a romance that came out in 1995. Okay. Michael Douglas, Annette Benning. Beautiful woman, I couldn't even get, remember her name. Smack me upside the head on that one, Lord Almighty. Martin Sheen, I could remember. Michael J. Fox, I could remember. The Matrix in this one. We even had Richard Dreyfus in it. Richard Dreyfus. Ron Canada. Joshua Molina. Names I come across every so often. Names I came across so often in my you know, watching movies and television shows. But in the American president, the ending speech, you can find this on YouTube. I may have to send you a clip on that one. But the way he talks about it, I don't know, they got the text on there somewhere on, on Google on that one about what it is to be American. What it is to be American. Okay. I'll find a YouTube. I'll slam it on the links down below. But this, I got to... This, I gotta say it. Okay? I'll probably get a PDF of this one here. It was so good. I mean, Sorkin and the writers, when you were creating the West Wing series, oh my god. Oh, I be still myself. Sometimes politics does get to me, and at a time, theatrics worse. Okay, here we go. Okay, according to a reporter. Robin, will the president ever respond to Senator Rumson's question about being a member of the American Civilities Union? President Shepard, played by Michael Douglas, 
Yes, he will. Good morning, members of the White House Press Corps begin to rise. It's all right. Keep your seats. Good morning. For the last couple of months, Senator Rumson has suggested that being president of this country was, to a certain extent, about character. And although I've not been willing to engage in his attacks on me, I've been here three years and three days, and I can tell you, without hesitation, being president of this country is entirely about character. For the record, yes, I am a card-carrying member of the ACLU. But more than important question is, why aren't you, Bob? Now, this is an organization whose sole purpose is to defend the Bill of Rights, so it naturally begs the question, why would a senator, his party's most powerful spokes, uh, spokesman, and a candidate for president, choose to reject upholding the Constitution? Now, if you can answer that question, folks, then you're smarter than I am, because I didn't understand it until a few hours ago. America isn't easy. America is advanced citizenship. You've got to want it bad because it's going to put up a fight. It's going to say, you want free speech? Let's see you acknowledge a man whose words make your blood boil. Who's standing center stage and advocating at the top of his lungs that which you would spend a lifetime opposing at the top of yours. You want to claim this land as the land of the free? Then the symbol of your flag cannot just be a flag. The symbol also has to be one of its citizens exercising his right to burn that flag in protest. Now show me that. Defend that. Celebrate that in your classrooms. Then you can stand up and sing about the land of the free. I've known Bob Renson for years. And I've been operating under the assumption that the reason Bob devotes so much time and energy to shouting at the rain was that he simply didn't get it. Well, I was wrong. Bob's problem isn't that he doesn't get it. Bob's problem is he can't sell it. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. And whatever your particular problem is, I promise you Bob Runson is not the least interested in solving it. He is interested in two things, and two things only making you afraid of it, and telling you who's to blame for it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you win elections. You gather a group of middle-aged, middle-class, middle-income voters who remember with longing an easier time. And you talk to them about family and American values and character. And you wave an old photo of the president's girlfriend. And you scream about patriotism. You let them know she's to blame for their lot in life. And you go on television and you call her, I ain't saying that word. Sydney Allen Wade has done nothing to you, Bob. She has done nothing but put herself through school, represent the interest of public school teachers, and lobby for the safety of our natural resources. You want a character debate, Bob? You better stick with me, because Sydney Allen Wade is way out of your league. I've loved two women in my life. I lost one to cancer. And I lost the other one because I was too busy keeping my job. I forgot to do my job. Well, that ends right now. Tomorrow morning, the White House is sending a bill to Congress for its consideration. It's White House Resolution 455, an energy bill requiring a 20% reduction of the emission of fossil fuels over the next 10 years. It is by far the most aggressive stride ever taken in the fight to reverse the effects of global warming. The other piece of legislation is the crime bill. As of today, it no longer exists. I'm throwing it out. I'm throwing it out and writing a law that makes sense. You cannot address crime prevention without getting rid of the assault weapons and handguns. I consider them a threat to national security, and I will go door to door if I have to, but I'm going to convince America that I'm right, and I'm going to get the guns. we got serious problems, and we need serious people. And if you want to talk about character, Bob, you better come at me with more than just a burning flag and a membership card. If you want to talk about character and about American values, fine. Just tell me where and when, and I'll show up. This is a time for serious people, Bob, and your 15 minutes are up. My name is Andrew Shepard, and I am the president. That stuck with me, Rev. That one stuck with me for a hell of a long while. 
And I find that one of the most inspirational political speeches, even from a, uh, from a fictional standpoint, is relevant to these days. I mean, that was just unbelievable. It's not just the fact that the president was dating a woman and then falling in love with her. And it was romance in it. But they also threw into politics. And then seeing the West Wing after that, well, well, me being a liberal, what can I say? I'm a lib turd slash libbed hard out here. But that movie was, I got to get the DVD to that one. It was one of my mother's favorite. But it became my favorite because there were certain political speeches in there that actually got my attention. And that one was the major one. That one was the major one right there. I thought that was powerful in itself. Powerful enough, I gotta save that particular site. Something of that nature would motivate people to do or say things. I wanna know about our guy in New York. What was his motivation? What was stirring in his heart and soul to make him do something so horrifying and tragic that he's got our country's attention on this one. We can't just dismiss it as being conspiracy. There had to be something of motivational in the situation. There had to be something motivating this guy. Not that I'm going to be turning into little green men are still out there. Well, if they are, they hadn't shown up yet. And if they have, well, we got our problem then, don't we? I think I've done a video too concerning about that one there. Just wondering about stuff, not saying that there are people because I got evidence out there. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is I'm trying to keep an open mind on certain soft topics at this point over here, which sounds like common sense, but maybe somewhere in there, if there is common sense, then we're still missing it because our own common sense meter is off the, char is off the charts or out of whack right now as it is. So, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, a lighter note before I close this one up here. I took my dog to the vet. I mean, I was having issues this week. And if you had caught in some of my videos that I've sent out there, let me get you a bit of a recap on this one here. Tax income was, uh, income tax day was coming up, and I didn't have a way of getting it solved. I needed to get the paperwork printed out. There was no printers out here, so I was worrying more about that. But my dog, for about several days prior to that, was starting to whine because she was feeling her ears were driving her crazy. There was like an infection in her somewhere. I didn't pick up until about on the 15th, and I decided, okay, I was going to get her over to the vet. Turns out I didn't have my card, a credit card that I had gotten about a year ago to cover this kind of situation. Well, it canceled all that last month. So I decided, okay, on that day, I'm going to call. I'm going to try to get her transportation arranged. I'm going to get credit approved on that day. I'm going to get her taken care of. Being, you know, problem, right? Wrong. No transportation. Credit approved for only that day. But the process still goes on. Hang on. Mamas. Come here, honey. It's okay, baby. Come here. I know, honey. Come here. Here. I'm not going to put you in a hot seat much. Give me, baby. I know she's going to be whining all month. Oh, next couple of weeks. I took her to the vet today. Ear infections in both. So her strong medication is working on her right now. But she still will be whining like crazy, but she's still alive. By the grace of God. It's gonna be a long ass video, and I don't. You know, I'm sorry about this one. This is my mama. This is my baby, and I love her a great deal. Twenty years old. Yeah, and she's still hanging on her. I couldn't get her over to the vet. No transportation, no nothing. It's driving me nuts. I had to send a letter over to the transportation company we deal with out here, Dollaride. 
uh, hosted by Kern Transit, which was supported by Kern government out here in the state of California. Okay, so correspondence came back in Wednesday. Found out I'm okay. All I got to do is call in again. Fine, call in again, get an appointment, got it today. Then I discovered money. Gets better. Okay, do the pull, find out how much I got left, and then pray. Get over to the vets, find out she's got ear infection in both. Strong medication of antibiotics in her ears. Uh, about one or two weeks, bring her back in for re-examination. I'm like, okay. Then I saw the price, and I'm like, better. But when I heard about just the ear infections, this is going to be something for the next couple of weeks. Because she is going to be going through a lot. But it's got to take time for that medication. Now, unfortunately, this is the kind of medication that they administered in her ears. And I wasn't privy to any pharmacy. Because if it was, I'd be doing a daily battle on these damn things. This is what happens when you're a dog whore. But I'm praising God on this one because... <sighs> miserable as she is right now. And I'm still trying to take care of as best as I can. Reverend, you ever seen a dog go crazy in a traveler cage? Those travel bags with the air, air holes in them. I got her traumatized. Hang on a second. This is long ass video, forgive me. I'm waiting for my eyes to pop back into my head. Dog carrier. I figure it would be big enough for her. At least big enough for her to spin around in any way. But Rev, this was needed. This was needed. She's got to hate this damn thing. I know she is. But this was one of those that... You really, really had to utilize one way or another for your dog. If she's going to be traveling to different places left and right, then, then she's got to have something to do it in. And this was one of those. This was one of those. Somewhere I'm having a storage bag for this thing, and I don't know where I put it at. But she was going ape. She was going ape in that one. I mean, besides her ears giving her pain, she had to deal with that. It took a lot of my energy, a lot of strength, not to yell at the poor dog because I'm seeing my poor dog suffer through, besides an infection I can't fight, but also dealing with cramped quarters I'm causing issues with. The rules and regulations for the transport we have for dial -a ride indicated you have to have the dog under control, but mostly you have to have the dog in a cage or a thing like that. If we're dealing with a service animal, she is an emotional support, but she's not a true service animal. But she is my emotional support. And she's taken a hell of a lot of emotional support from me just to keep her going. That's what you do for family. But she was really having a hard time with that cage. I got the cage just in case I had to take her out. Or I was going to go to another place or maybe to the vets taking care of her nails or something like that. I was going to be taking her back over to get her nails done and they already did it for her. That was a good thing right there. But more concerned about her health. But the one thing 
Rev. I don't know how many you've lost in your lifetime. Too many in mine. One way or another. And it never leaves you. It never does. I didn't want today to be that day. I didn't want today to be that day. I don't know how the hell I would be able to deal with it if she had. If I had to make that call. If I had to make that choice. I'm already dealing with enough of it as it is over the past 10, 11 years. How many... If I'm going to be specific about it, a mother, a brother, a fa uh, another Phil favorite pet of mine, and a surrogate mother... Other people have lost more people than that and are dealing with it more often than I am. And dealing with the combat, and not to mention being numbed. Being numbed by circumstances around them they can't even control and they're trying to deal and cope with. And when I lost each and every one of them, I had to deal with the same damn feeling, same damn thought pattern, the same damn thing, Rev. I got broken, and I got broken bad. It was like after my brother passed, I was it. I couldn't deal with it anymore. Every time I kept seeing someone else's fictional work, or I'm saying non-fictional work, concerning about death, or somebody's talking about it, it's triggering me left and right. And then sometimes when I'm watching the fictional, it's like opening up the floodgates all over again. can't avoid it because it's part of life. I've been told a hell of a long while ago when I was a kid growing up you deal with it, you cope with it, you move on. You gotta be a man. You gotta be a man. <sighs> was the guy burning in New York a man? Sometimes I had to question my own damn manlyhood. Someone else's version of it. Or if I've been a caregiver a few times in my life and it still hurt like hell. Pressed into service the first time as a teenager dealing with my grandmother. Stroke ridden in bed. Half her brain not working. Half the memories there and, couldn't even, and she couldn't even recognize me half the time but at the time, she could. It was hard to hell to see my favorite grandmother in our house, my mother and I doing 24-7 on her. My big brother trying to get out of the Navy to help take care of us. Okay. Long stories on those, dude. Try to go to junior high, and then you go to high school while taking care of her grandmother. She dies, and then you have to go on through high school. Everyone trying to cope and, and deal with their own way. I ran and I hid inside. Closed the damn bedroom door, and I was... I didn't want to deal with anything anymore. I just wanted to hide there in my own damn imaginations or someone else's. Just not deal. I just wanted to run away. I wanted to run far away. Join the Rebellion, Star Wars, beam me up in Star Trek somewhere. Just let me get the hell out of home. Couldn't deal with it anymore. Even if there was a magic portal, I'd go through the damn thing. Couldn't deal with it. Decades later, after I go through and growing up and trying to shove everything else down, I had to be functional. I had to be a functional human being. Job after job after job after job after job. Educational training here, educational training there, job after job after job. Until you damn near get killed in a job. And even during that process, I was doing the uh, last several years of my mother's life in a bed. I was seeing her just slowly dying because 
everybody she cared about in the past, all her siblings that she loved, and uh, nephews and nieces, friends, pets, all adding to a toll. Just crushed her. She wanted to go home. She wanted to be with everybody. And damn, do I know that feeling. I know that feeling, Rev. I scared the hell out of her, my therapist every time I keep talking about it. I scare him. It's not that easy to deal with this one, I'll tell you. It ain't. I'm going to put up another video.